Welcome back to another podcast of Road to Abundance. Today we have Nick. Guys, Nick is one of my friends from Montreal for the last seven years. Right before the call, we were talking. I was like, fuck, bro, how long did I know you? And I met Nick when I was not in a good spot, in a toxic relationship. I was kind of depressed. I was weighing 200 pounds. That was the only good thing in my life. And Nick was also doing social media. So we were the OG of the social media. Welcome to the podcast, bro. Thanks, man. Got to be here. <laughs> So guys, fast forward to today, Nick is in a beautiful relationship with his girlfriend. I think that they're engaged. Nick is going to tell us a little bit more about the story. He has the jungle gym in Dominican Republic. He's building amazing thing there. He also built a tremendous brand, a fitness brand with his girlfriend. So life is rolling, but um, Nick is making a lot of money. Things are good, but it's not always been like that. And that's why we're here today. We want to hear the story. <laughs> I, I think the, the heart was always there, but I think the action wasn't matching the ambition, like we said. Uh, I think we were talking a lot about big goals and achieving the impossible, but have no fucking clue how to get there. Uh, and mostly that you think you know, but you don't. And you don't, you have too much of an ego to ask for help, ask for guidance, ask for advice, to get a coach, to get a mentor, to get someone that can pave the way or just tell you like, hey, you're gonna, you're gonna fuck it up like if you continue that way, you know, just just learn your, your, your craft and make a different path. And but work I felt that like back in the day, I'm sure you you could relate to that, but it was too much of a pain to ask for advice because you feel that you would be seen as a weak entrepreneur or as a weak guy in general to be like, hey, I need help to make it happen, but you're too shy and weird to ask away. So you're trying to get everything done by yourself, but you don't actually have no clue. It's like getting in shape, like having the Mike Shabbat body, but not knowing exactly what to do. You gotta fail. You're, you're, you're gonna <laughs> follow the right of the wagon. It's impossible. It's such an achievement, athletic, that you need some guidance, you need something. It's, it's impossible to, to get by yourself to that level of achievement. So it was, it was really, um, back in the day, it was an ego thing. I think that I was too proud of myself. I think I was too proud of what I, what I achieved. And I, I was like backing myself up with like success that I had back in the day with other industries or other successes elsewhere. That you think that you can just oh i was successful over there so let me kill this thing but you're it's two different world and you cannot yeah. do this it's, it not requires the same skill or mindset or actions belief you know <clears throat> but exactly some, man yeah. it's it's cool to to hear it because i was a little different i was asking for help but maybe i was asking and not truly listening so the thing is, I was receiving the advice, but I was like, fuck, I know better. Like, I'm better than this. And then it's like, maybe my ego was involved, which yeah. I was asking, but not ready to be guided. And that's one of the questions I ask every client that come in. Are you coachable? And if the person I see is not going to listen, and it's okay because you don't know what you don't know until you know it. So uh, it's cool to hear the story. And, and you and I, we met because we were living in the same building when I used to be with my ex. And we met through connection of friend. We were doing social media. And yeah, bro, you you do a journey. You're successful at some area of your life. And then based on that success, it's hard to be on bowl and start again. And I, I had the same exact thing happen to me. Even last year when I switched from a career, making a lot of money doing social media. I, I'm, I'm a top in social media. I'm, a, I'm, I'm an expert in my field. But starting that new uh business of coaching the road to abundance it's like you have to go get your hands dirty bro you have to go back into yeah. do the work and all that stuff and you cannot base your success on the past success because that's a new business and it takes courage and humbleness to go and be like okay i'm ready to learn and that was still a process for me to, at my age and and with with all the previous success and i had to admit that i'll, I'll do the work and that's it man so props man for doing that so um I know. Yeah, if I, I don't if know. I can, yeah, if I can add something to your point, I think the just knowing that you don't know anything, it's really helpful because every time you <laughs> try something new, if you're at, in that arrogance, 
in their youth, you know, arrogance mindset, like, yeah, we know better than everyone, like, like, you know, fuck everyone. Yeah, I'll do my own thing. Yeah, I don't need anybody. But you're, you're really, you're, a, you're a shit. You don't know anything. But you're too proud to, yeah. to, to acknowledge that. So if you, as, as you get older and you get some wisdom and experience and beyond your belt and some huge failures, sometimes you're getting hit in the face and you're like, you know what? I didn't know everything and I should, I should ask before it happens. But then again, you get a lesson out of it and everything is positive in a way. But yeah, to your point. Yeah, man. Everything happened for a reason. And like, I know you from, um, I want to hear a little bit the backstory kind of like what led you to become that man? Like when you grew up, was it easy? Then did you go to college or did you drop out? And then you had some success in what business? And then what led you to become like to meet your girlfriend, do that business, decide to move to Dominican Republic and all that good story. Like I want to hear like what happened before that. Okay. Um, I'll try, to, I'll, I'll try to do it quick, but I think that the, like if I, if I see like myself as bullet point, first thing would be like high school was awful. Like all of us, um, high school was a pain. <laughs> yes. I, I, I got saved. I doubled my fourth year of high school and then all my friends got, you know, a year ahead and then they left and then I was alone in school a year older. So that arrogance started that way, like this, that year, because I was one year older and when you're high school and you're one year older, you, you feel like you're on top of everyone <laughs> in the school, especially the direct director, like teachers and everyone. So I was getting really arrogant and I was in the office of the director almost every day. And he was like, you're getting your life away. You're getting, and you're, you're trying your life apart. Like your parents will be, you know, mad. And, and I was like, my parents doesn't give a damn about school. They just want me to be happy. And it was true in a sense. My dad was like, you cannot fail school because it's just, the only thing you're going to have achieved was that diploma. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> but why, why though? You know, like the, what diploma do I need to get happy or to do whatever I want? Because what I wanted back in the day, like mostly every young man was just partying having fun, going out, drinking, meeting girls, you know, in, in your 17 body, your 17 years old body, you just want that. You just want to party and having fun. Well, for me and a bunch of my friends, some other yeah. people, some other guys were more nerdy and more like intellectual analytics. And now they're like coder and developer and they're making a lot of money, like in a computer with like six screens and like, Of course, we need some guys like that, you know, to build our stuff. <laughs> But I was the kind of guy that was like the creative and, and visionary and with, with ideas that didn't make sense at the time. But I was just a dreamer, you know. Yeah. So my music teacher got me uh, really, it's, 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 it's quite a, a cool story because uh, I was going to fail my uh, high school and um, I was always like, uh, I don't know in English, like boxing. Like I was... Like, oh, no, just not going to school, like, drop, yeah, it's like, you're, you're missing class. class. Skipping class, yeah. I was skipping too yeah. much class, and in, in a way, I was going to get help, you know, like, they want to get, like, suspended me. So, my music teacher at the time, I was playing drums for already, like, six years. So, he said, you know what, you have too much potential, and you have too much skill, and so, like, creative and artistness, that, like, you should just come to my class instead of going home. So you'll stay on the school ground. Nobody's going to see yeah. you, but at least you're going to be at the school ground. And you, if someone calls your name at the answer or whatever, you're going to just like run and, and, and be there, you know, to check if you're still at school. So this guy made me get my high school diploma because I was, I was hiding in the music, the like a music studio. I was getting my headphones and I was playing drums for like hours instead of going home, you know? It That's was a awesome. Your first was, mentor. <laughs> yeah, the first guy that, that told me like you have so much potential, but this thing is kind of kind of important. Just do that first, <laughs> then you'll know like what you want to do after. Because after that, for the first time, you'll have choices. And I was like, Yeah. Okay. Nice. Okay. So 
fast forward, no college, no university, of course. I was not against traditional education, but I was like, you know what, I'll just do my own thing. I'm smart enough. I wasn't, but I had the confidence of a young guy that can do anything he wants. So the confidence was always there. And um, in a way, I was just creative. So I started like as a photographer, videographer, building website. I did a course for as a graphic designer. Uh, I did a course on photography, and then I started my own like you know my own journey, like getting clients, getting photography clients, getting website clients, to a point that I got a contract with Jagermeister, the brand, the uh, old brand from Germany. And uh, Jagermeister got me the opportunity to be the photographer for Quebec for all the Jagermeister events and activations and stuff. And I got this gig in 2008 or 2009, Jagermeister. And within six years, I became the, the regional marketing director for Jagger in six years. But I had no university, no diploma, no experience whatsoever in marketing or like international alcohol company marketing. But I got there by my own, just with my action and my mindset of yeah. everything is possible. Yeah, I'm a photographer, but who cares? I can do that. I can do better. I can do that better than you, bro. Like I was always that kind of guy that can do that better than you. You learn on your too. own. Yeah. That, that's amazing. And were you consuming the product? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Tell us a little Wait, bit so about that part. I remember you liked alcohol. You you did some promotion for clubs and stuff. What 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 about that stage before the successful Nick? Like, how did it impact your business? I was there too. I'm not judging, bro. I had my share of women and alcohol and stuff. Uh, I'm just curious to to hear. Like, I, I love to hear when people were such a dream dreamer vision. Things were rolling, bro. You had the skills, the knowledge, the talent, but. You were sabotaging yourself, if I remember correctly. Uh, well, this this part of this part of my life, 2009 until 2016, it's seven years. Um, that was the worst seven years of my health, like my mental health, physical health, spiritual health, anything, because it was high performance partying for a living. So for some people, it was like, bro, you have the dream job. You're partying all the yeah. time. You're getting paid. You're surrounded with like the hottest bay that are fully branded Jagermeister every weekend. That's your staff. Like, you know, what the fuck? What, what, like, how did you get that job? And I was like, I always create my own opportunity, you know, because Jagermeister, yeah. like, the company that did the marketing for Jagermeister in the whole Canada, I was the only one in Quebec, so I was like the guy in the whole Quebec section. So they created a job just for me because it was a small, a small French market for a big company. So I was like yeah. super like listened when I was in a meeting with other guys because I had a, an entire market by myself, the French market of Canada. So I became really like like successful into that field. I was making a lot of money. They gave me a, like a brand new truck. My cell phone was getting paid, my rent was getting paid, plus a salary, plus a, a business card, Jagermeister, that I can go to a restaurant, drink, anything. I had like over 300K per year to spend. Bro, my life was just, you know, you feel like a millionaire, but it's not your money. So it's even better. Yeah. You're spending like just everything you want, but it's not yours, you know? Um, and how was the so happiness at that time? Like, how were you feeling inside when you had all that stuff? Did you, you know, when people look from the outside, it looks like the dream job, the hot girl, the everything, the money, the restaurant, the drinking. How did Nick feel inside? So publicly, I was living the dream. Uh, and also, like, I was showing that because I always been like a happy guy. You know, I, I never been depressed. I, I am always like super happy and grateful. Not grateful. Grateful became came after that. But like, <laughs> I was always happy, you know, good vibes. But sometimes, like often at home when you're alone, and that was that was the hardest part. Like because I was always surrounded by so much people. And when I got home alone, a night or two or a week or a weekend, I was always feeling really shitty because if you're right now, you're with your own self by yourself yeah. and i didn't like what i was looking at the mirror i didn't like what my thought was 
I was always thinking of the next party and what should we drink tonight and where should I go to drink and what like who should I invite to go there and it was always like party and I never yeah. focused on like yeah but what are you gonna eat tonight or when do you gonna hit the gym like bro you're you're drinking a 26 ounce of Jaeger every night you should go to the gym like if you need to balance your thing because right now you're just putting 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 and you're not giving it up, giving back so I gained 80 pounds in seven years until like i met you um yeah i was at my fattest like i was 300 pounds <laughs> well, so yeah i remember the chubby nick <laughs> yeah I, I was i was always like a chubby guy i'll i'll put some some fault to my parents that you know they're they're not really healthy they're not really in shape and they transfer that knowledge and habits to me But after 18 years yeah. old, it's your own fucking fault. But, you know, yeah. 18 years old, I was chubby, and then I just became fat, like obese. And yeah. at a point at 200 pounds, it's always, like, morbid, right? So, in a way that, like, you're in the shower, and you, you have, like, issues to just wash your back or your abs. It's, it's, it became, like, a, a statement of, like, you're not, you're not moving properly. You're not aging you're not living properly like your entire body is hurt every single yeah. minute that you're living you know <clears throat> so and uh, again it it took it took two more years of this madness until i met my future wife yeah we're engaged <laughs> then this girl just got into my my life as a collaboration on instagram so I was like, do you want more followers and get your get some clients? And in exchange, you can help me out because I'm 300 pounds. And we started dating after a week. And like it was just straight up like it was meant to be, you know? And yeah. we're together for five and a half year now. We're engaged. I, I proposed to her and uh and Petra and Jordan and Jordan uh in front of Ooh. one of the yeah, and one of the <laughs> seven uh uh wonders. Was, wonders of the world yeah in petra so it was really beautiful i had a I had a crowd of like 300 people tapping I was super happy for us almost dropped the ring in a sand for it <laughs> i was i was <laughs> really nervous it was the first time i like yeah. someone so it meant something for me really like like in, yeah in, in, in my entire life it was that was that was her and just her um but that that woman changed the entire nick mindset about mm. Like health, health in general, not only mental, because I was reading books and doing self growth for 10 years before her, but my physical self was just, I don't know, man. It was, yeah. so, it was weird. It wasn't in my, my head. It wasn't a priority. Right, let's, or, let's, put a, let's put a pause there and then we'll continue the story. I want to acknowledge a few things so people can understand the subconscious behavior and pattern that happened there with Nick. So, I like that you just said that you read a lot of book, you did a lot of seminar, you did a lot of thing, but you didn't really apply it. And that's the case with a lot of people. They buy the book to feel good or they really want to do it, but they don't take action until there's a shift, until your mind is rewired. And that's the real when the real change happened. And even though you had all that knowledge, at some point it comes with, there's, there's two really core belief. I'm not enough and I'm not love. And now that when you work on those issues, After we'll talk about the result that it did when she came in your life and it, it also helped you to love yourself and do all those things. Because when you get yourself to a point that you're fat and you're obese, you don't love yourself, no matter what you say. And it's not about looking good. It's not about the six pack. It's about, it's causing damage on your body. It's disease. There's so many health issues and like nick said if you can't wash your ass we got a problem so the thing is not only to look good when you're naked and to be confident and you don't need my body you don't need a six pack the thing is are you healthy are you having healthy habit like are you doing the things that you love for yourself and yes you can love yourself even if you're fat right now but the goal is to love yourself enough that you'll take action which nick loved himself from the moment that He was like 300 pounds and it, it hit him and he's like, fuck, I love myself. Let me work that and I'll still love myself in the process, but I love way better the new me that is healthy. And you did a lot of thing and it's a lot of years of uh, 
reprogramming that you did. And yes, a lot of it come from student, te uh, teacher, parents and the society and all that stuff. We have our blame because we let it take it and, and, and we wire our mind like that for the few years. And yes, we are the only one to blame. But the thing is, our subconscious subconscious mind is a sponge taking it, everything, and then transforming our life and making us become the way that we are. And then I'm super glad that you were able to find her. And then now I, I know it's been like five years that I see you guys together. And I remember the moment when you met her, actually, I, I was in Montreal and you're like, yeah, I met this girl and it was, it was cool. And um, she's been evolving with you a lot too, because I kind of... I didn't knew her personally. I knew a little bit of her backstory and you told me about it. So you guys both grew tremendously. And that's what I want to acknowledge here is now it's not only about being successful and stuff for you. It's having the, the what I call the four pillar. It's like happiness, relationship, and relationship can be friendship with your parents, with your loved one, your surrounding, your environment. Then we have wealth, which is career, money. How do I feel? And for someone could be a hundred thousand a year, for someone could be ten million a year. It doesn't matter what it is, as long as you hit your own goal. And the last one is happiness and fulfillment. And I think in the last few years, if I'm not wrong, from looking at you and and talking to you and being friend, it's like you evolved a lot, and now you have those four pillar, and it's a constant work. You're still reading all those books, but the difference is you're applying the knowledge right now in yeah. your life. Yeah, because, you know, reading and knowledge without action is just entertainment. And yeah. it's, something that, it's something that really crossed my mind a bunch of times. Like, hey, I'm reading so much stuff that my brain was just firing up. But the action <laughs> wasn't following up. So I thought that, like, oh, I need another book. Yeah. It, like, you, you heard that saying that, like, you should read five books but a hundred times each like that saying of like it's not how many books you read it's which books you read and applied because if you take yeah. like Dale Carnegie like how to win friends and influence people and you read it twice a year just with that book you'll become successful one book so sometimes I, I was I was in that like mental masturbation like I was just yeah. what's the next book and I my first coach I remember I was like Yo, give me your top 10 books. He's like, bro, don't read. <laughs> and I'm like, what, what do you mean? Like, you're so smart. Give me some, give me some, give me some love. You know, give me some books to read. He's like, bro, you know enough. You know, yeah, you're smart. Like, you, you know enough. Just apply what you know. Like, everything that I'm saying, you're like, yeah, no. Cool, do it. <clears throat> Just start with that. Yeah. And when you're going to overcome that, you know, that, Uh, mental masturbation, I call it. Um, at a point, you'll, you'll make some action and then you'll step into new zone that is outside of your zone of comfort. And now you'll yeah. become like, oh shit, now what do I do? Because I've never been there. Exactly. So it's a new summit, it's a new horizon. And now you're like, okay, what kind of book should I read? Because now I'm like surrounded by anything that I see right now, I don't recognize. Yeah. So it's, I, I, I feel like the books are here to level up. Just find the right one that got, like gets you to there, to there. And then when you're here, enjoy, work on yourself, master it. And then what's the next book that can get me to, like I was reading a, yeah. a book uh, six months ago, like The Hard Thing About Hard Things, because it's a book about being a, like a really, Two years ago, when I wasn't a CEO with a team of like 20 people to, to lead, it, it would have been like, why should I read that? Become a good CEO when you're like an entrepreneur, the only guy that makes money in your own business, you know? Yeah. So uh, it, it was weird, but I now what I read and what I consume is for what I need to achieve now. Like not in 10 years. Now, what do I need? Yeah. My Spiritual, relationship, communication, psychology, sales, marketing, whatever. What do I need now? <laughs> and I get to this now, you know? And I really help you. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that's cool. I love the word mental masturbation because that's exactly what it is. I heard it before and now you say it. I'm like, fuck, I, I remember because I was exactly like that. Bro, four hours of studying every day for the last 15 years and so many books. Um, and 
I was like, I need to know more. I need to know more to be good enough. And it all comes down to that. People call it perfectionist. People call it whatever. But you're just afraid of failure because you're scared of not being enough. And you're scared that people see that you're not enough. But this is all in your head. So once you start getting rid of those limiting beliefs, and that's why action is way, way more powerful. And like Nick said, it's cool to read those books. It's Books are amazing. They changed my life. But if you don't apply anything and you just mentally stimulates yourself to feel good about it, it's like if you buy a coach, if you buy a trainer, but you don't use him just to feel good that you have a trainer, then it's 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 nothing worth it. And like Tony Robbins always says it, it's 80% psychology, 20% action and uh, 20% how. And the pe people get lost on the tyranny of how. It's like, how can I do a business? I'm going to read more book. How can I be a good entrepreneur? How, how, how? It's more like 80%, who do I need to be? And once you understand this concept, become that person, start taking action like you are that version of yourself. So the Nick that is a CEO, a powerful, a lover, a, everything that you want, how does he behave? Does he snooze on his alarm? Does he do that? Does he go to the gym? Like, who is that person? I envision that person and I become right now. And often people are like, Oh, it's easy for you. You're successful. Like, oh, I would get time to go to the gym. It was never like that for me. I was always at the gym. I was all, yes, I had ups and downs, but I always did the action before I get it. Like if you don't save money now, you're not going to save it when you're wealthy. And I went bankrupt. So now I know that I need to save money. And that's what people think. I'll be feeling wealthy when I'll be wealthy. That's not how universe work. So that's where the 80% come. Be that person before you become that person. And if it's the only time that I would agree with fake it until you make it, but not fake it lying to people, make yourself believe that you're already that successful person and whatever success means for you could be different. If you want to make 60,000 a year and be a happy relationship at your job and that's what you want, you can do that. If you want a hundred million, then fucking do that too. Like whatever makes you thrive. Yeah. Yeah, like Bradley says, you have to be in order to become. I love that because it's, it's, if you have to cheat yourself and lie to yourself to put yourself into an identity to become that person, bro, just do it. Like, do, I did it. Like, and, and the gym was something that I, that really helped because I wasn't a gym guy at all. Like, at all. I, I hated going to the gym. I hated playing sports. I hated like anything that was moving and getting me sweat. <laughs> Good. You know, I was a fatty. So of course you don't want to get wet. Yeah. Sweaty, you know? So the gym part was like you said, right on point, like what should I what this guy look like? And when you start looking at like people that you envy or you're jealous, you're like, these guys are like like you're crushing it and you look at them and they're all in shape. Somehow you got to be connected, you know, in your head, you're just like, well, maybe I should work on that first, you know, because it looks like, and you're going to be like, probably agree with me because it's, it's the easiest thing to do in all your areas in your life is what you eat. And if you go take a walk or if you go to gym, Nobody can take that away from you. You own your decision. I'm yeah. choosing right now to open my mouth and taking something. Nobody's forcing me. So it's the mm -hmm. easiest thing you can do is like what you eat. Because well, yeah. success, relationship, it all depends on like tremendous factors and like, you know, spectrum of stuff. Getting yeah. healthy is you versus you. Is it's like not you're non-negotiable. It's like you're you're negotiating with your own self. Like, should I? Yeah, I want to eat that, but should I eat that? Because if you eat yeah. what you want, you won't get what you want. So it's like a weird ways of thinking and being super concerned, like intuitive. But what I want now is not what I will, will become. So if I find the guy that I'm like, I want to be like this person. What does he look like? Like you said, what is, what's your, what's his identity, like persona? Like, what does he look like? What kind of music he's listening to? What kind of car he drive? What kind of mindset he have? What time he wakes up in the morning? What kind of books he read? And you start to, and that's why you're getting some mentors and some people that are there. Yeah. 
and they are exactly, exactly telling you how they're doing stuff. So you just have to apply this guy the same thing, and you become. Yeah. It's so it's so easy, but it took me how many years? So <laughs> let, let's say I'll rephrase for you. It's so simple yet not easy. That's the thing. It's you see it and you know. And the, and and one thing I like about nutrition, and you said it in the gym, is like two things that are free and two things that you're already gonna do. I mean, the membership at the gym is thirty bucks. The thing is, going there, taking action. Same thing. And and a tips I can give you if you want to change your whole identity with drinking or or eating that stuff. It's not. Oh, I'm trying to stop drinking. I'm not drinking. And you're not drinking until you have control of that thing. So when I stopped drinking at 24 years old, when people offer me a drink, and drinking is like a weird thing in society because people feel weird that you're not drinking. Oh, it's for your abs. It's for this. No, bro, it's because I love myself and it's a poison. And yeah. I don't even know why this shit is legal because it makes you stupid and do stupid stuff. So the thing is, it kills your brain and it's proven Versus a lot of other plant medicine that empower and are illegal. So that's another topic. But the thing is, once you start having the identity of I'm not a drinker, I'm done drinking. It's not I'm trying, I'm done. Same thing. I don't eat sugar. I don't put that crap. And when you said like you want to eat it, it's actually not even you. It's all the bacteria and the microbiome in your gut that you messed up that wants that sugar. So you think that you want it, but it's them, they're, they're craving that. And I'm no different than you. And if I start feeding them, they get bigger and stronger. So they want yeah. more and then they control your mind. So that's where you need to discipline yourself. And if you can discipline yourself on the food, which is one of the hardest and in the alcohol and all those things, then it will start to be easy. And then you can add workout, you can add doing a walk, you can do cold bath, why cold bath? Yes, there's a hundred of health benefit. It's so good. But the thing with cold bath is there's no negotiation with yourself. It's another thing that if I tell you to step in that bat, you do it. You don't argue with me, bro. You get in and yeah. it's going to be the same. So you start with alcohol, food and all that stuff. And then if you want, you can enjoy a glass of wine or whatever. I know that you like some good whiskey, old fashioned whiskey, if I remember. And the thing is, you can enjoy some pleasure if you want. But the thing is, Make sure you're in charge of your life. You're in the in the driver's seat. Yeah. So now that Nick is fully empowered and stuff, I know that you had um, you created some good project at the beginning. You you did some uh, NFT. I know you're in, interested in AI and all the same thing that I do. You created this amazing company, Think I Fit, with your girl. Can you tell me a little bit more of what it took to become like? kind of like your routine, your best time management and what it is to have a successful company and, and who's the Nick now and what's next? Um, so back in 2020, before COVID, before the pandemic, um, <clears throat> Ali and I got a, an opportunity to build a gym in the Dominican Republic. I was there for a week getting invited as hands <laughs> Got there for free for a week. I remember that time of my life, which like I was so <laughs> happy to get something for free. Uh, but anyhow, uh, I was I was there for a week with Ali and invited to a motel in the DR, and we actually fell in love with that place. It was the the vibe, the energy of this place was really something, really like spectacular, unique. And then we really felt that we needed to come back, but to actually do something, not just come back on vacation. So I asked the, you know, the owner of the hotel, like I am, that like, bro, we should do a jungle gym here, like in Tulum. Like, it's the same vibe. And a lot of people are coming here, but there's no gym. Like, I want to work out today. Where do I go? And he's like, oh, you can go to the city. I'm like, yeah, it's, 20, it's 25 minutes drive, and I don't have a car. I'm a guest. Where's the gym? Like, there's no, there's seven hotels nearby. Nobody has a gym. So you're like, like, and, and the place is gorgeous as Tulum, even better because it's a real jungle. It's not like a street with no mountains and the beach. Like, <laughs> where yeah. I was in Samana, it's like mountains everywhere Paradise. on the beach. So you have both worlds. Yeah. So I'm like, this is something really special. So the guy said, if you want to come here, build a gym and just, you know, you want to invest, I'll give you the land and you just build a gym and we'll do a partnership. And we signed something on like Dr. Sign and like two months later, we were there for six months with Ali. So 
when we moved to the DR to open that gym without speaking Spanish at all and not knowing where we're going to live and we have our dog and our luggage, we got the, we, we, uh, we broke our lease. Uh, it's like, yeah, we're going, like we're never coming back. You know, you never know, right? So we sold everything, put everything in our garage. It's my parents' place. And then <clears throat> COVID happened like a month, you know, after. So it was a weird timing that we were in the DR. But a month before the DR, like two months before the DR, I just asked Ali. Ali was a fitness coach and I was a marketing consultant. So I was online and she was physical. So I said, if we're going six months in the DR, you're not going to be able to train people over there. First, it's Dominicans, and it's not going to be tourists, and it's not going to be easiest as like living in Griffintown, Montreal, and having like a hundred people that have money that wants to work out, and you're a fitness coach in the yeah. building, you know. So it's going to be harder. So we should do something online, and you should provide like a result, like a, a guarantee result within 60, 90 days, whatever, like sell the results of an entire universe, an entire program. And at the end of your program, you'll have X, Y, Z. So we built a high ticket offer because high ticket was everywhere, posting around like, this is so smart. It's like it, you're selling the, the result and not like the, uh, the program or the, the action, you know? Yeah. And I felt that it's a, the best way to, to convince someone because what they want is the result and not what they're going to have to do. You know, yeah. it's like a car. If you're getting, if you want a like a new car, the, the, the sales guy, if he's good, he's just going to hand you the keys and be like, hey, have fun, bro. Let's see in 20 minutes. Because you need to test drive this thing. You need to feel it. You need to. Yeah. Sorry, guys, we had a little technical issue with Nick. <laughs> the browser didn't want to record. So you were talking, bro, about if it's a good salesman with a car, he's actually going to let you test drive it. So it's all about the feeling and the benefit. So, and you were saying that you hired a team for high ticket that kind of showed you how to do that. Yeah, well, we, we, we didn't hire a coach at first. We, like, like I said, I was super ego. So I was like, oh, let's just do it ourselves. But again, like the, the, the first month we did like 20K in sales, just me and Ali, the next the next month was like double. So like the, the, the worst thing that can happen is to feed that ego with proof, right? Because I was like, oh, we can do that ourselves, And then we did, <laughs> you know? So like, like, we don't need any coach or anything, but at a point you're losing so much like stuff inside the business you don't know how to properly onboard a, a staff you don't know how to properly run meetings you don't know how to properly you know do a lot of stuff you know so who are you gonna hire first who's, what's your first hire what does it look like what's what's needed what should you transfer um like task or or important that like the first hire should be so important for you, but it wasn't for us. It was like, oh yeah, let's just hire this girl because she's our friend and she's going to help us do whatever. But that was the first mistake. And then you hire a bunch of people to do not the, not so much. And then you're starting that, that level of cash flow is just growing like down because now you're just, you're not two entrepreneur hustling together. You're like having a staff that does a lot of stuff that you don't understand why yeah. you're doing it. And at a point in a certain time, the business was costing more than it was generating. So we were kind of like unbalanced. Um, so we, we did a, a, a huge like, like brainstorm, Ali and I, and we just changed the direction. Again, with high ticket, but like a different way to sell, a different way to, to approach clients and stuff. And then we started to make more like profit. And then while we were in the DR, we, uh, we bought a land and we built a villa over there because we wanted to live there and not in hotel rooms and you know, a little apartment. So we invested in the real estate over there, we did that. Then the gym was you know, generating absolutely no money. But the good thing was as a wellness business and with Ali, my wife, that it's my future wife, that it's a, like, a, like a fitness icon in, in the girl uh, wellness in Quebec in the French market, knowing that she built the gym and the DR got us like Narcity and a bunch of PR, like Journal de Montréal, like a bunch of like great article, like for free, because 
oh my god, like a little girl from Montreal full of tattoos just opened a gym in the DR. Like, wow. With his boyfriend and like they're doing this together and like so power couple was there, it started to generate like, some some traction of like, oh we, we built a business together, we moved there together, we built a gym, we built a villa, we you know, we started this this whole process and then the funny thing about that is like you know with excuses and, and a lot of people are like we said earlier like oh like what book should i read because i'm not sure like that i have everything to start <laughs> i like i didn't know how to do high ticket but i was too much like with so ego is like a like a double like sword right the both side sword it's like yeah. it can be really helpful or it, it can crush you but in that case it was really good because i started something without being like afraid yeah. or like on, on, on neutral. Like I just did something, you know, but yeah. at, a, at a certain time you need someone that just comes in and be like, <clears throat> yo, this is all the things that didn't go well and you need to dress, <laughs> you know, yeah. and then you get a coach. He's like, bro, you're missing that. This thing is awful. You should do this. And then at a point like this, the business is really much faster now mm -hmm. and better, more like strong, way better, business. way better. Yeah, exactly. And that, that's cool thing. Like the thing is like, that's what I always tell client. And even we were discussing off the podcast, you and I, it's like the person you need to become to build a hundred thousand dollar business. Cool. The person you need to become to build a million dollar business and the skills that you need. Cool. And you could build a million dollar business alone, but build a $10 million business alone. Forget about it. And the thing is, if you do build a business and you do everything, Because at the, at the beginning, you're going to need to put your hands dirty. You're going to need to do the work. You're going to need to really get your hands there. No matter who you are, when it's a new business, you're starting, you're doing the work, then you get it. And then you want to build a foundation, the right track. That's when you can start investing in coach. You can start investing in mindset and sales, whatever you need at that time and keep investing while you're growing. But the thing is, if you do build that business up to a million alone, the problem is, you're not going to be able to scale. There's going to be a stagnant moment and then there's going to be backtracking because what you build is going to be shaky. And then one, you're going to integrate new process. Everything will crumble down. It's like, imagine that you have a, a card castle and then you start taking piece at the bottom to replace them with wood. Yeah. Yeah. It's for the foundation. It's going to be better, but at some point the, the castle will fall and then you're going to build it solid. And I did the same mistake. I remember last year when I launched, um, Road to Abundance, I launched first week. I'm like, I'm not even sure I get client with, with, with that. Um, I, I'm doing social media. I'm doing a bunch of other stuff. And I'm like, I'm going to start coaching right now. I'm ready. No excuses. And I'm like, I'm good enough. Let's go. First post and week that I do like my launch session, 150 people want to join. I'm like, oh, wait, wait, bro. I don't have time to book 150 call. What's going on, bro? I'm lost. I, I get I get the first group of people started, which was six people at that time for my first week. So I get six people and then couldn't follow up on anything, anything else because I was so committed to my client that I, and I didn't have email tracking. Uh, like I didn't have a system to follow up with people and to get them on the call and stuff. And it was like, I was alone and I was running in between social media and this and that, and then other stuff plus planning a trip for three months in Canada. So bro, I had to like pause everything. And then all the leads were lost. They might come back at some point, but the thing is I yeah. couldn't follow up. I couldn't yeah, do yeah. this time. What I did is I, I prep, I analyzed stuff. I hired um, like somebody that did it already. We did all the basic and now I'm ready to scale up to like, I would say right now I'm ready to scale up to a million but I'm working still to optimize everything that I can be able to scale to 10 million after. And the difference between one and 10 will be employee and hiring and all that stuff. So now I'm building the team also slowly because you don't want to drain your cash flow. That's another very interesting point that you said. A lot of people have business and they're such in a hurry to get lazy that they hire people or the wrong people, or exactly. it's not a process that is, is, is done the right way. Yeah, so, I, yeah man, that's cool. I feel that something that nobody talks is that the, there's there's a few points of my what I'm gonna say, but foundations of businesses are not sexy. So we're not used to focus on that. We're used to focus on 
doing the logo, the landing page, the, the VSL, the sales <laughs> funnels, doing the content, filming podcasts, like every all of that that I say is super sexy. You know, like, like now we're doing a podcast, it's sexy, it's nice, it's fun. We're talking with two gentlemen, we're having fun. Everybody's like, oh man, these guys are having fun, they make money, they're, they're, they're healthy. Like, what the fuck? But the foundation of the business is like the unsexy and the worst part of the entire process of having fun on podcasts is because the foundation of the business was laid and it works. So now I can do a podcast with a good friend in Florida and my business is closed and I'm not there. So if you're not doing the foundation yeah. first, you'll end up like being a slave of your own business, you know? So I don't want to not work yeah. because I love the hustle, right? But in a way, like if you're if you're doing like 40 to 60 hours a week in your own business, the business owns you. Yeah. You're not you're not an owner. You, you yeah. don't own, you know? So you're an operator, you're not an owner. Exactly. But you know, on a certain extent, like you said, it's important at the beginning to do it because you're the only one that can do it. So you do it and then you show the way to someone, here's how I think, here's how I process, process things, here are how I make decisions, how I see things, blah, blah, blah. And then you find like someone that can help you to do the stuff that you really mm -hmm. don't want to do and you're not good. Yeah. You find someone that does it. And then you put your genius hat and you go all in while other stuff that is boring for you and that you're not good, like finance, Canada, like accounting, admin, whatever, like building CRM, like it's, it's boring, but having a CRM built change everything in your self esteem. So you need to do it. And like yeah. you said, scaling businesses is only staff or computer, like uh, CRM mm -hmm. or like software. You can only scale by two yeah. things. So how many people do I need? How many humans more than I need? And what kind of software I can build so I can scale more? So at a point, it's just getting more staff, staff, staff. And you're still using like Google Sheets and Google Drive. And then in a way, you're like, uh, we should move to like a real CRM or a real software yeah. that can track email or a sequence or do automation. But People tend to like bug and stay there before just starting selling. They're like, yeah, but I don't have an email sequence that sell after. Bro, nobody gives a fuck. I didn't have one for two years. And I, I, it yeah. still doesn't work properly. After three, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Like just focus on getting leads, nurturing them, closing them. And then when you get the cash, just figuring out like what to do with it. That's it. Like people are so yeah. messed up. They, it's all in reverse. Like, oh, I need the right staff and the right software and the right sales funnel and the right copywriting and the right logo. And the right... no, you don't. You just need to sell an experience and a service that people want or need. Yeah. And that's it. And then when you get like five, 10 clients a month, you get that 10 to 20K a month to 30K a month. Now you have cash to, to brainstorm what to do with and what kind of help do you need. It's, it's a weird pattern that we all have and we all fall into it. But as you get a coach or as you, you learn from it, it's just it's just way better to just go all in, do all your mistakes in the first three months. You're going to look dumb. You're, gonna, you're not going to like yourself because you're going to feel dumb, but you're going to learn so much about yourself that like the next three months will be way better and then way better. And then the next quarter is better and the yeah. next year is better. And, you know. Because I, I love what you're like, saying, and it's it's no, it's, yeah, it's like getting like, your hands dirty. Yeah. The, the, oh, go oh, ahead. <laughs> so, it, and it, it, there's there's a lag, so I don't know if you're talking or. But I was just saying that like, everybody, every guru or every like coach are talking about the sexy stuff, right? Uh, so we're all wired to build a tower, mm -hmm. but nobody's telling you how to build the foundation and the ground, and that's the weird part because it's not sexy. Mm -hmm. Like imagine I was doing an ad right now and like, hey guys, you want to learn how to do onboarding with every staff? No, we don't. <laughs> I don't want to really know that, but I need to. You know, yeah. so I would make money building like onboarding uh, process for entrepreneurs. I would maybe because nobody does it, you know, but it's not the sexy part. So it's yeah. something that's forgotten everywhere. 
Yeah, you need to you need to do the work at first. That's the best way to learn about your business, about your client, about your offer. And then you can make the good offer because you'll know what you're talking about when you actually make funnel. Because no matter how good your funnel you think it is or how much you pay, you're going to need to learn who's your your dream client and your specific client. And that's a lot of, like you said, I made a story yesterday and it was funny because it was exactly about that. It was like, now there's such a big trend about I did it faster than everybody, younger than everybody, and I got the biggest house and car before everybody. Like, we forget that, okay, Mike, when he started Road to Abundance, took two years, let's say, to reach $10 million. Um, and then I would be like, I made $10 million in two years. Nah, I've been prepping for 15 years, putting mentors, hundreds of thousands behind, and now Mike is able to quantum leap. And also Mike was making money before like 500 600 thousand a year and then mike used that to invest in himself and do this 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 and then we just want to portray what's what's the best for social media nowadays it's all about the look and putting the sexy stuff like you said it's like it has to look sexy business has to look sexy and we want we already want the yacht the girl the the jet everything the travel before we actually put any work but that's not entrepreneurship. Like there's a lot of other thing and it's a lot of delayed gratification and it's going to be a hard path for everyone because also when you start getting money, like, like I told you, like now it's, it's a really good week for me. I, I'm closing. It's like, it's cool. I'm serving people. I'm not excited to go spend that money. I'm not buying a Rolex. I'm not going to buy another car. I'm actually keeping that money. I'm going to reinvest it in the business. I'm going to make sure that things are floating like people get excited so fast to change their apartment, their car and their stuff. And I remember when I did that, that's when I got bankrupt and I had to downgrade my BMW and my car and all my stuff for, I went to grab a normal car and for years until I was back to making 150,000 a year. Then I switched it for a Mercedes. Then I kept the Mercedes for a while. And then I had a normal BMW up to when I was making 25,000 a month for three, four months in a row. Then I switched from my actual car and I just got an expensive house because it's been three years I was making consistent money yeah. and I'm with Sally and the dog. But before that, I was still living in an apartment. The apartment were expensive because I was in LA. It was, I had no choice, but if I was living in Montreal, I wouldn't have paid what I was paying in LA. I would have got a normal apartment. I mean, I say normal, I don't want to offend anybody like in, like I would say two two thousand dollar two thousand five hundred dollar a month in in Montreal. That's not crazy spending compared to a, the the LA rent I was paying yeah. of eight thousand. So the thing is, like, I would have never got a place at eleven thousand dollar Canadian in Montreal or ten thousand. That's the equivalent. Like I would have got like something like that's nice but quiet, and. I would have saved, I, I, I saved my money, I invested in an app. I tried other stuff because I'm always taking risk. And that's, that's the cool part. And that's the part that you do that I wanted to also show to people that it's not about like we were just talking before and you got a nice apartment, but nothing extravagant because your goal is to build that business and you don't want to be stressed by paying a $15,000 house. Yeah. Or, or a car because like, Ali just, just got a Porsche, uh, Porsche last week, but not a 911, you know? She got a Mechanic yeah. AS, brand new. She's super happy. She got the logo. Like, for her, it's a milestone. And I wanted her to celebrate, you know? Because it's really important yeah. to get the win, stack in the win, and be like, okay, this is, from what I've done, this is the, the gift of my level. This is my, I deserve that now. And you, you fill mm -hmm. the level with like gift that you're gonna treat yourself or whatever, you know. Um, but what she wants, it's a, it's a 911, and we could have got, it, but my lifestyle and my standard would have maybe made a difference. And I don't want to spend money, so much money. Like I have a percentage in my in my head from the business perspective and from the salary and the dividend and everything we have, I have a percentage of like what's allowing, what makes sense, you know? And if I'm going up that, I won't die. And I still <laughs> will, you know, having a good life, but I will feel anxious yes. because I know that it's above what's smart because the day that, let's say someone gets to me on DM, like I got a, I got a coach now. I, I, I worked like a, 
uh, I got Bradley uh, coaching program, and you know, if I would buy everything that I want, I wouldn't be able to buy someone like Bradley or other people that are gonna coach me to do ten times more. You know, so I prefer having a percentage yeah. for fun and a percentage for growth. So like I have a percentage of, of expense, yeah. but it's divided by you know a percentage again. So it's like this is for fun. Let's just you know, having a glass and not giving a fuck. And the other one is like, no, this is for self-growth, coaching, whatever. And mm -hmm. this thing is way bigger than the other. Because I know that this thing will oh, bring yeah. way more, you know, fun to the other basket over there. So I just feel that it's a yeah. matter of perspective again. Like some people don't want to spend $10,000 on a coaching program because they're like, they don't have that money. It's because you don't have that money that you need it, bro. Exactly yeah. why you need it. You know, because yeah. if I would have four million in my checking account, I wouldn't need that coach. I'm good, you know? But if I don't have the money to spend on a coach, it means that I need to. And it's weird, but it's yeah. one of the closing factors. It's that telling I the universe. To. Yeah. It's like it's like getting it's like being fat. And telling the fitness coach, nah, bro, I'm good. I'm going to lose weight before having a coach. Yeah. How does it make sense to you? Like, say that and tell yourself, does it make sense? Because you've never been able <laughs> to do it. So what's going to change tomorrow? Yeah. No. Yeah, but I'm not motivated. Exactly. Yet for days. You know? So. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. It's the thing is like. And that's the main investment that I always did. And right now you're talking about 5,000, 10,000. And now the, the more money I make, my only crazy expense is uh, on personal development. Now I think I invested enough. I'm, I'll still invest next year, but on different stuff. Uh, this year so far, I'm at 170,000. Like it was my biggest year. And the thing is, it, it make, it's making me laugh because sometimes people are like, oh, you don't have a Lambo or, or this or that. Bro, I can buy a Lambo with that price. Like you would see my yeah, monthly like payment cool. for yeah. personal development. You, you wouldn't believe how it's more than my house. Like, like chill down, man. Like it's just, I love my car. My car, I just paid it cash. I'm not in, like, I'm going to change it at some point. But the thing is, it, it's a first world problem. I have a nice exam competition. I don't need, like, I'm going to change it. It's two years old, three years old. Like, I don't care. Like right now I'm, I'm investing in other stuff, the business. And then there's other stuff. Like I have a 911. It's that I want. Um, I have those two cars that are on my bucket list, the Porsche red and the X five M, uh, in, in green. I put them there. It's just material. I, I could buy them right now. I could go right now and buy them for the price I buy them at the personal development. But it's really important to understand that. It's the first purchase you should do is invest in yourself because no matter what happened, nobody can take that away from you. And one key thing that you said, and this is probably the best thing that we can say today is if you think you can't afford it, that's when you need it the most. Yeah. And you know, like the cost of opportunity, I read, a, I read that in Dollar and Cent, like a book I read last year. The cost of opportunity is really important to figuring out. Because if you're, let's say you're buying that 911, you can, technically, you have the money to do it and you wouldn't die, you wouldn't be on the street, but that four grand a month payment would cost you an opportunity that you won't have for something else. And that's just a yeah. really weird, but you just have to think about if I'm spending that much on luxury, cool, but this money is gone for something maybe better mm -hmm. that will come to my way and yeah. I'll be like, fuck, I should have buy that Louis V bag or, you know, that weird stuff that I just did because this coach would got me and, and it's funny because right now, Ali and I are like on the opposite of the spectrum. We used to make some money and then treat yourself and now it's in a way of like <laughs> wanting to spend so much on growth that sometimes Ali's like, dude, like, no, not another coach. Like, like you have a, you have like three right now. Every day you speak to someone different. I'm like, yeah, but I don't. I still don't have a guy for spiritual. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I want to nail everything in my. Life. I want to. I want someone to point the direction on every aspect. Like you said, wealth, love, yeah. happiness, and health. I have health. I have a wealth coach. I have a happiness like mindset weird coach. 
And sometimes I'm like, well, now what should I focus on to get another like level of, of understanding about myself or about self or whatever? And then abundance coach like Mike or anyone that can show you another way to get what you want because abundance is such a secret biohacking weird tool that it works so so well for everybody that apply it and it's something that i should have like really listened to it like years ago but i was like yeah it's bullshit like blog university i get it no but feeling abundant in every aspect of your life will attract and and you'll become a magnet to everything that are like kind of deserving of what you, like it's it's a weird Vibe. Yeah. And I know you can explain it way better than me, but on my perspective, it's like every day I feel abundant of love, of money, of opportunity, of relationship, mm -hmm. of family time, of dog time. And I and because I feel it and I feel that I don't miss anything, I don't I don't miss anything. And these things come to yeah, me in exactly. a way that is really magical. And sometimes like even Ali were talking and she's stressed and she's like we should, like, we, should, we should do this. I'm like, let's just see what's up in the next 48 hours. I won't push it. Let's just see. We're so up on yeah. like, shit, we'll just figure it out. And in a weird way, within 36 hours, you get a note or a text. Yeah, I'm in. You're like, see, I didn't do anything. I just put it out there. Yeah, we're, man. We're so, like, abundant that, like, people will just feel it and want to connect with that frequency. And this was happening. Yeah, it's it's all about the frequency. And like you said, there's one phrase that, like one key phrase I live my life by and it's everything that is meant to be will be. So when I have a situation that I'm facing, like recently I have something like, um, I have a lawsuits that I'm in right now. And um, I was like, I don't want to deal with that right now. Like, so I called a lawyer, paid money for it. I'm like, let's push it. Like, um, I don't want to waste energy like to go after those people right now. Like, and I was like, you know what? Everything is going to happen for a reason. Life will figure it out for me. So I got the right life lawyer that fall into my hands. Um, and now he just told me today that the case has been, um, uh, reported to, well, delayed to 2024. And I could have taken care right now. I could have put energy a, 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 and get money for that, for that case. But the thing is, I didn't want to put energy in and for anything in life, like you said, a situation, a coaching, anything, you believe that I'm like, life will take care of this for me. I know that life will get good. I just know everything will be okay. And that's what I keep repeating myself. So instead of stressing that, because I didn't want to fly to LA, like it, it was like a lot of things. I was like, I, I don't feel like wasting energy right now for this. I just want to delay it and I'll, I'll take care of it later. And I was like, you know what? The court is going to be okay that I don't show up and we just delay it. And and that they did. And now everything is good. It's like, because it's energy, bro. Going there, going to like, even if I, I could make money and stuff, I don't want to do that right now. It's not in my path. And for every situation when there's a hard time in business or anything, I always tell my life. And that's what I did when I closed all the social media stuff and all the business related to it and all the sponsor it was 500,000 a year all that and I was like I know everything will be okay because it's meant to be and that's how I live my life and yeah man it's it's energy there's a lot to say about it and it's a it's a big topic that I that I coach the rewire the abundance and all that stuff and I I really it's cool that you see it now um I want to leave people with <clears throat> for the book lover give me your three best book um, and remember guys, the goal is not to read them all and to go on a book hunting. The goal is that if you find a nice book that you love, make sure you really understand it. So give me your top three book and then give me like people that want to work with you or, uh, that want to be coached with, by your girl and stuff. Give me your social and also I'll put them in the link uh, below and your last word for the podcast after. Yeah. Um, like I said, books is, is, is not something, um, there's millions of books, uh, and I feel, I really feel, and, and it, it might be an opinion, and it might be biased, but I feel that the old books are better because they were built to really send knowledge to the world instead of being a personal brand asset. You know, like even Ali will 
yeah. do his own book, right? Our own book. And it's gonna sell because their story is insane. But it, it's amazing and it's cool because it's, it's a story. But let's say I would build, uh, I, would read, I would read a book, I would do a book about sales or, or marketing or, or personal branding or, or abundance. And it would just be like a lead magnet for more. I would put much value in it, but it's, I feel that it's a lead magnet opportunity, not like let's just share to the world this knowledge that I have, like Seneca or like all this yeah. philosopher that just wanted the world to understand their, their knowledge, you know? So like Napoleon Hill, How to Think and Grow Rich is honestly like the easiest thing you can read about how to grow a mindset of abundance and wealth. And you're gonna understand if you if you haven't read this book and you're an entrepreneur, I don't know what like what you what you do. I, I, there's a lot of books like this that just, if you haven't read it, like like I said, how to win friends and influence people from Dale Carnegie. It's just you could read that book twice, three, four times a year, and you would always understand something new. And it because the things that we know and the things that we do are separate. And it's not the things that you know that makes mm. the difference. It's the thing that you do. So reading yeah. this thing all over again will get you again to think that way. And you'll become a better person for a while. And then it will fade away. And then you reread it. And then it kicks back the, the – and until it becomes a habit like fitness or, or whatever. You have to get that yeah. muscle growing all the time. So – you're not used to, to do that, so you read, and then after four months, you reread it. These two books are, like, amazing. Yeah. And I would say, depending on, like, where you at, um, like, I really love, like, the, the hard things about hard things. Uh, it's as a CEO perspective, or if you want to be a good leader in a business, this guy is just dropping mad knowledge and really transparent about his uh, experience as a CEO of a multi-million dollar business that he sold. So this 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 thing could be really helpful for people that wants to level up their leadership because I've learned a lot about this book, like about leading a team, being transparent with your team, being honest. A lot of people think that like a CEO or a boss should hide things from their staff as they grow. You shouldn't. You, they have to feel part of the growth. They have to feel part that they have a part. You know, they're not numbers, yeah. they're part of the growth. So if you're if you're really transparent yeah. with them and you're telling them when it's good and when it's not, shit shit is different. Like the leadership is way different. And now we have a culture. Business culture that is insane. People will never leave this place. It's too good. It's too good to be true. Yeah. It's too good to have some people like me or Ali has leaders. And I tell that and some people will be like, bro, this guy is really dumb. Like really dumb. Yeah, I'm really calm about that. Like, I, I don't, it's really cool to work with us. We're cool. We're cool. We expect yeah. stuff. And if they do it, bro, we're giving them the moon. They're like, we're really like rewarding them. And we're happy. And there's so many recognition that we give. Them. Yeah. People are so mad happy that, you know, if you build that culture, people will come work for you and never quit. And you'll build like sales teams, coach people that they, they don't want to leave and they don't want to leave never. Yeah, it's important. Important to give back to your employee. Really appreciate that message, brother. And where they can find you and 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 if they want to work with you, say your uh, your handles and and maybe the website. Yeah, so uh, it's it's a really French niche market. So if you're a woman and speaking French and wants to you know optimize your health, live better, longer, and look better in the mirror and feel better, you can you can reach us at Tinky Fit. It's thinkifit in English dot com. Uh, there's an Instagram, or the obviously the brand itself is made by Ali, which is a respectable woman in the space, which is Ali Bryce. So you can find Ali Bryce, you can find Thinkifit, and me, it's Nick Leger. So if you want to like follow the CEO of this business, because I'm not talking about weight loss, I'm talking about more stuff about business and lifestyle, and we traveled. Uh, I think 21 countries now. So like, we love to explore the world. Let's go.
That's amazing, man. Sorry, Obi wanted to come say hello to Nick. He, he was scratching my chair for the last five minutes. Uh, I got a little needy Frenchie, but thanks a lot, man. I'll put your link down below. I know that you bring value as a as a CEO, and it's cool. Like I know we were talking a little bit about all that, like off camera, and it's cool to see people that did the work and are putting the effort. So, guys, I hope that you learn. I hope that you get value from this podcast, and I'll see you in another episode. Have a blessed week. Make sure to thumbs up and follow. Thanks, Mike. Ciao, everyone. <laughs>